Okay, training wheels are off. We are going to set up Google Analytics e-commerce tracking by pushing data into the data layer. We're going to do this for our specific system. So this is a custom install. Here's what to know. I'm on WordPress. WordPress is a PHP-based code. So we're going to have to stick the code that pushes the data into the data layer into a PHP system. So let's get started. Uh, a lot of the things we did in the previous video are the same. So e-commerce setup, we wanna make sure we have enhanced e-commerce setup here. Then we want to make sure that we're not using a plugin. So I'll go into plugins real quick. I'll deactivate that so it's already deactivated. Then I wanna make sure I have Google Tag Manager. That's set up. Good, that's in the head. And I wanna make sure that we have the body part for the no script. Let's go into header.php. We have it here. So all looks good. We don't have any plugin that will help us do this. And we have Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager. Now what we need to do, like last video, go here. We want to edit the settings. We want to change this to enable enhanced e-commerce features and use data layer. We're using the data layer in the same way because we're going to push the exact same data into the data layer. We want to set this to just because, okay? So we update that variable. Good. And the tag is also the same with a small, well actually the, tr the tag is exactly identical. So let's, let me show you. We go here and we say event. For the event, we're saying enhanced e-commerce, transaction, set this to true, use this settings. So that's the exact same thing that we did in the last video. Here's where it's slightly different. We're going to create an event, but we're not calling the event, you know, we're not gonna call it the same name. What we're actually gonna call it is this. I can pass the event name in the data layer dot push action. So the event name is this this time, and it can be anything. You can define it to be anything you want. And some, some custom events, doesn't matter. We're just gonna leave that untouched, and we're gonna say order received, okay. Save. So everything is pretty close to being identical as the last video. The part where this gets complicated is actually implementing it dynamically in your system itself, in your theme, in your templates, in your whatever. That's why they always say you need the help of a developer to do this. So here's how I'm going to do it. This is the code. And in WordPress specifically, I'm going to copy this code. Talk about it here in a little bit. We're going to go into WordPress. We need to find the place. So I'm using WooCommerce again. And actually, actually I just need to go in my theme editor. And I'm looking for functions.php. So I'm going to scroll down here. Enter, enter, paste this code. So I'm by no means a PHP expert. I literally did write this just by looking at other pieces of code that I've found on Stack Overflow. Here's the idea. We get the order ID. In that order ID, we get the order. So we pass the ID in, it returns what order that is. So information regarding that order is all stored in this order variable. That's pretty essential. Now we need to understand what the data layer code looks like. So when you're looking for documentation, you're probably going to run across this page. And they always say this, implement using the data layer, recommended. Yeah, it's the hardest thing possible. 
So go down here to purchases because that's what we're interested in. This is a data layer push event. And notice that they don't even have event in here. So this is a JavaScript code that we need to fire on that page. Now in WordPress, the way I'm getting it to fire is there is this, this piece here. It knows that this belongs to that template, that order received template, uh, the thank you template. And then this here is push to data layer. That's the name of this function. So it's calling this function on this particular template when it fires. And then this stuff here is literally this right here with the PHP variables replacing dynamically the values. So that is like the big secret. Un you know, remove the curtain type of secret here. That's what's going on. This PHP echo order get order number, this function will return the order number for this particular case, for this particular WooCommerce system. And you would do that for each of these. So if you have affiliation for this example, I just use the blog name. So my blog's name is Pro Simply. That's what's going to appear here. Revenue, it gets. It uses some PHP to format it as not a text, but as a an actual number. And this is this will get technical if we start diving into it. But the idea is, if you don't know what data types you need, you can actually look at the documentation. Let's see if they have um, data types and actions here. So this will tell you what type it needs to be. And we can see, like, they say currency. It really has to be a number in JavaScript. But hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully this script works for you. Now, this is the hard part. You were probably wondering, how do I get each product? Because we saw that product array. It had two products in it. How do you do that? You can get that from the order in this, in, in this system you can, and we use it using a for each. So for each item that was purchased in this order, we wanna loop through them and we fill out these attributes dynamically with PHP. Okay, so enough talk. Hopefully that gives you enough context, but let's hit save here, uh, update file, okay. Let's test it out. So nothing should be really any different. Let's put Google Tag Manager into preview. Let's go to products. I'm gonna add two of these this time. And then I'll add one of these. Now we'll go to the cart. Proceed to checkout. Pay now. Okay, we've paid. And before I do that, I want to get Google Analytics in the right place. Let me go over here. Let's open up real time. Since this is an event, we can see it. The actual conversion. Um, revenue numbers and things, they won't show up for about 24 hours, so it's not going to be immediate. So let's go ahead and hit return to merchant. And what we're looking for is this event. And it did fire, and it did fire, not the first item though, this was the second item in the sequence. We click this, we can take a look at it. Notice the name, it's EE transaction. Remember, in Google Tag Manager, I gave it that name, the name of the event for the trigger here. And the way, the way that's actually defined, if you look at the code, it's right here. So this says data push, we say event, and we give it a name. So that's that. We did see this event come through, so it was successful. The last thing to check is the data layer, see what information came through. So remember I added two items, 
Let me open this up a little bit more here. So this is the full data layer right here. This shows two items were put in there. We only bought one of these. So it all looks good. So this is the complicated part. Getting your developer to understand that we need to push the transaction data into the data layer on that specific page so we can have it available to pull into Google Analytics as an event. The order information showed up in Google Analytics now. I wanted to show you what that looks like just to confirm. So remember this order, it was order number 390. It was for $41.88. It had $3.22 shipping, 171. There were three items purchased. So let's go and look at Google Analytics, conversions, e-commerce. Let's go into sales performance. That's going to give us transaction IDs. That's the order numbers. Let's switch our time period to today. We can see 390. Notice what it tells us about it. So revenue shows 36.95. You might be wondering, well, why is that? Total amount was this. Yes, that's because we also have shipping and tax separated. So if that's not important to you, you can feel free to modify it as needed, but we still see tax and shipping in here as well. Quantity is three, so that's kind of more information. We can see what we bought. So we bought this. This was a total product revenue, two of them. One of these, 697. So that's it. Hopefully this helps you out. If it does, let me know. So that's it for e-commerce tracking manually and using a plugin.